Hi, I'm here to talk to you about AWS Amplify today. AWS Amplify is a set of tools and services that enables mobile and front-end web developers to build secure, scalable, full-stack applications all powered by AWS. My name is Gerard Sands and I'm a developer advocate for Amplify. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an offline first app using AWS Amplify and Amplify Data Store. You will create a chat room progressive web app using Vue with a seamlessly offline experience. Amplify Data Store is an on-device persistent repository for interacting with local data and able to automatically synchronize via GraphQL. Using Amplify Data Store will allow us to implement offline first while using a simple programming model. Before we start this tutorial, let me show you the Getting Started Guide. So I'm going to pick View. And here we can see the different pieces that make the Amplify framework. The Amplify CLI, Amplify Libraries, Amplify UI Components, and also the Amplify Console. And before we start, I would like you to follow the prerequisites. So just to make sure you have the latest versions of Node, NPM, and Git. And also, if you haven't got an AWS account, this is the right time to go ahead and create one. You can follow the instructions in this video. or you can follow the manual instructions that appear just below. Before we do that, let's go and see a demo of what we are going to build. So we can see here two different instances of the app. These are now released and using HTTPS. This is a requirement for progressive web apps. And we have a chat room. So this is a chat room where different users can log in and post messages. So I'm going to write a message. And as you can see, it's been shared with the other user, which is using a Firefox instance. And we can see here the name of my user, Gerard Sands, also the time that it was posted and the message. Let's answer. And we can see the behavior. So what we are going to build is the offline capabilities. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of these clients offline. And we can do that by showing the developer tools, picking the network tab. And here you can see that I can go offline. So one thing that our app is picking up is the offline state. So whenever I'm offline, my client will pick up on that and show a message. So it's clear for me that any messages that I send during this time, they will be hold on my device and shared once I'm connected. So let's share a message. So I'm going to send a message and one question you may be asking is, okay, so where is this message? Of course, it cannot be shared. So it's being stored using Amplify Data Store. The moment I went online, the UI has changed. So now I'm online. We can see also that the message has been shared with the other 
clients, the other people in the chat room, the time is as the original time that it was created. And on the network from my client, we can see the interaction uh, from GraphQL. Another thing that I want to show you is that we can refresh while offline. So let's do that very quickly. So I'm going to go offline again. And in this case, I want to refresh the page. So I know that when a client is offline, we'll be able to do that. So I'm going to refresh the page. And you can see that all the content has rendered correctly. And if we look at the network, we will see that most of the requests have been served by the service worker. So that's pretty much it. We are now ready to get started. The first thing that we want to do is create our view app using the view CLI. So we're going to go ahead and create Amplify Data Store. Let's check that everything is working. Okay. And the first command is amplify init. And that will set up our amplify project. So we are just going to pick the defaults. And pick our AWS profile. Next thing will be adding the authentication flow. So we are going to pick the default configuration using the username to sign in. And we are ready to Amplify Push that will create and provision all of the resources that we will need to get the authentication flow ready to go. So we are going to go ahead Next thing is we are going to add our dependencies and this is AWS Amplify and AWS Amplify UI view. So let's configure our app and we are going to take the AWS exports and call Amplify Configure. That will link our app with our AWS account. We are also going to remove some of the code that we are not going to use. And we are going to add some header and some styling. So the first thing is adding the Amplify Authenticator and uh, some of the dependencies. And the first one will be adding the user so we can uh, follow the user as it logs in. And we are going to just load that user. We can see here the authentication flow, it's working. So we are ready to add our API. So we're going to pick GraphQL. We're going to change the API name to Chatty API just to match uh, the name of our app. We're going to pick API key as the default authorization. And at this point, we want to make sure that we pick conflict detection. That's going to set up our Amplify Data Store and it will allow us to synchronize with uh, DynamoDB. We are going to pick Auto Merge 
and that's going to be the last update uh, wins. We can also pick some other options, but that's going to be uh, the one that we are going to use. Let's look into our GraphQL schema. So we pick the to-do schema as a template and we are going to use that to change it for our chatty app. So we're going to stay with the ID. We're going to add a new field that will keep the user. We also need a field for the messages and this will be in our chat room the message that we exchange and also the time it was created. We're going to use a AWS daytime for that. And that will be it. So let's push the latest changes. So we can start using our GraphQL API. And we are going to pick all of the defaults. So that's going to create the code to access our APIs and is also generating queries, mutations and subscriptions. OK, so we have our GraphQL endpoint. You can uh, take note of it and also the API key in order to use it. So let's see what we have created so far. We can go to the AWS Amplify console and pick our app. If we go to Amplify Data Store, Backend Environments, we will see that we have created two categories. One is authentication and the other one is API. So here you can come and access the users. You can check the console incognito. You can also see an overview of all of the different resources that we have created and you can of course check the GraphQL API. There's also the data source which in this case is a DynamoDB table and you can see here all of the details. So now we are going to add the dependencies for the data store and we are also going to generate uh, the models for our GraphQL schema. So here we are going to display a form so we can submit our messages. We link that with a V model that will be part of the form. And users will be able to send their messages. This is just a single chat room. So let's go ahead and import the data store and the models that we created. We're going to use a form so we can take the messages from the user and we can start by implementing the send message. So the first thing we are going to gather the message from the form. And we are only going to continue if the message is not undefined. In order to store this message in our data store, we are going to use the save API and we are going to use the model to create a new instance. So that will require a user. We can use the user from our logged in user details. So we are going to use the username from that. 
Then we have the message. The message we uh, took from the form. And we can also use the shortcut as is the same name. And then we will add the created add field, which is using an ISO string. So that's pretty much it. Once this message is stored, we're going to update our UI. And in this case, I'm, I'm just going to log a message in the console. Another thing I want to do is I want to clear the message so it doesn't it doesn't appear and the user knows that the message has been successful. If we want to add error handling, we just need to add a catch block and so far we are just going to console log the error. Now we are going to add the chat room messages. The first thing I'm going to add the loading so we can display a loading message and we need a container so we can display a list of messages. We're going to use a sorted list and we can also don't forget the key as this is a best practice. We are going to bind the class so we can differentiate between my messages and other people messages and I'm going to use the username. The classes will be me and others and I'm going to change the styling for those. Basically one is going to show on my left and the other ones are going to be showing on my right. As for the messages I'm going to use the timestamp so we can see what messages, uh, what time the message was created. And then of course the message. One thing we need to do is in order to format the different messages on our view, we're going to use some filters. One is just to show the time and the other is going to use also the date. So we have the date and also the time. We need these new entries on our data, on our state, the messages array and also the loading. And I'm going to just sort the messages. So I'm going to create a new instance and then sort by using the timestamp. As we're using the moment library, I need to declare this so we can access a moment. And then to load the messages, I'm going to show a new API from data store. We're just going to change the flag so we know now that we are loading these messages. And as for the data store, I'm going to use the query API. The query API uses the model as the first argument, and this is the model that we generated, and the predicates. For the predicates, we can pick all, and that will query all of the messages in our store. Then we will just change our flag, so we are not showing the loading anymore and we will assign the messages so we get the latest ones. So this is pretty similar as the previous call that we did uh, to store the message. We are gonna add error handling again with a try catch. 
and we're going to use the same approach so we are just going to console log these very quickly okay so that's pretty much it and one thing I want to make sure is that our loading is always set to false when we are leaving this method. Another thing I want, I want to implement is the delete all. So we can also clear all the messages, very similar to query, but now we're using delete. And then we just refresh our view calling load messages. We're going to do the same after the user logs in, so we always get the latest version of the messages in the data store. Let's add that button. So one thing we want to add is the ability to get real-time subscriptions and here I'm adding that subscription with the data store observe from that we can pass the model and we will get a subscription which will give us few things like the operation type and the element and then every time I got an update I'm gonna just load the messages in the data store so we can get our UI synchronized. So here I'm going to just send a message and we can see the information that we are logging, the model and the operation type, which is insert. And we can also see that the first time that we insert our message, we are missing some of the details. And the idea is that these details, delete, last change and version, they are only being updated when our data store is synchronized. So the first time we create the entry on our local data store, the second time we get the update from the cloud. So that will tell us that this has been updated in the cloud and the version will be incremented. So now we have a version two and we have the deleted flag. To true. So now we know that this record is being also deleted not only locally but also in the cloud. So we need to take that into consideration when developing our apps. We have always the local data store and the cloud data store. So let's see that on the back end. So we can go to AWS Amplify Console and I'm going to go to the table which is storing these messages and we will see the fields for those messages so let's see the message and we can see that this message is now in the version one we can see also the timestamp the user who created that message and if i go ahead and delete it let's see what happens on the server side so we have a version, a different version number. We have version number two. We also have the flag dele deleted, a true. And we can also see this time to leave. And that time to leave will tell DynamoDB when it can purge this item. So it will be done by DynamoDB. And if we enter this into a converter, that tells us that it will be removed in a month time. So we don't need to actually do anything. It will just be DynamoDB that will do it for us. So let's see how that works when we are using two different clients. So here we have on the left a Chrome instance and on the right a Firefox instance. And as you can see, it's pretty fast. We have two users, JSONs and Robot. And we can also see what happens when I go offline. So let's see that. I mean, for now, when we're going offline, we get just the dinosaur. 
And here we can see that we can play the game from the dinosaur, but it's probably not what we want to do. If you want to play this game, you can go to Chrome Dino and you can play it on your own. But I mean, of course, this is not what we want. What we want is um, to use, to be able to use our app offline as well. So let's see what changes we have to do in order to make our application offline first. So we can see that actually we don't have offline support. So let's, let's change that. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to run the add command on the CLI and we are going to add the view PWA plugin. That will allow us few things. One of them is working, being able to work offline. The other feature that we'll be able to um, achieve is that we will be able to install our app. So we can see the changes after running this command and one of them is that in our main JS we have a register service worker. We're going to build our app and see what are the changes. So in our this folder we can see that we have few folders. We also have some assets that has been created for us and this is to support the different devices that Progressive Web App support and some other things that we have in this dist folder is the manifest. This setup for Progressive Web Apps have also already changed how our index HTML page is rendered and that will allow us to use this app in the different environments. So if we look at the manifest, we can see the details of our app with some icons for the different uh, Android and iOS platforms. We also picked the standalone property and somehow we got also some pre catch files. So any file that was in our public folder, it's now being pre catched so we can install it. There's also the service worker, which has been uh, completely auto-generated for us. And we are going to look into how we can change this file later on. So that's going to be our service worker with the view PWA plugin but we're going to see some issues with this default configuration one thing I want you to show is how you can test your app and because we are using service worker we need to be able to use this locally instead of having to publish it every time. So you can use this simple HTTP server and I'm going to demonstrate how it works. So I, I just changed the port so it's localhost 8888. That's our simple HTTP server. And now if I uh, load the application, I will see that the assets are being served by the service worker and you can see it here. So now this has been pre catch We can also see here on the application tab we have our manifest, our service worker is ready to go and it's already serving these pre catch files and we can see the files here. These are all the files on the public folder. And if we go offline Let's try to refresh. Okay, so we got most of the application, but we get some failed files. 
these are some traces that workbox it's leaving for us and we can see the pre-catching responses so we have some issues we are going to use the custom configuration so we need to add a view config file we are going to create a public manifest json that's uh, gonna be creating all the settings when we installed this app in different devices so that will work for windows mac and linux that will be uh, the default settings. We could also copy the manifest from the default view PWA plugin. And we are just linking some of these properties that live in this PWA property. And here we have some settings for Apple devices. But the most interesting is this Warbox plugin mode. We are using inject manifest, so that will give us a, a custom setup. We need to create the service worker file on the source folder. So we created the view config, the manifest file on the public folder and also the service worker. We are going to use similar settings from the default configuration. So that's the entry on our cache so we can identify our app. We are also using some settings so our devices use the latest version of the service worker and they don't wait to do an update we could also implement a pop-up to ask the user if the user wants to upgrade to a new version of the service worker but we are going to use this setup for now we also saw that there were some missing files so we are going to pre-catch those you can see the svg from the Amplify logo. And we are just gonna add this to all of the pre catch assets. So every time we try to access these assets, we're gonna pre catch them and they will be ready once we install the application using the manifest. So let's run the demo. Uh, we need to build again. So we use Jarn build for that. And we need to also run the simple HTTP server again. So we have the latest version now on our disk folder. So let's serve this folder with, with the server. So what we want to test now is that we can go offline and we will get that serve from the pre-cache. So we need to at least load the application with the new service worker once. And let's check that we have, for example, the SVG file. Now it's on our cache. So we are now safe. We can uh, go offline and that will be served from the service worker. So let's try that. Okay, so we can see that the logo is working now. So using a custom configuration, we can uh, fix uh, the initial issues that we had with our uh, application. I also want to test that I can still send messages offline. I can see the message uh, locally. And let's see that on Indexed TV. So if I go to my data store, my Amplify data store, I can see that I have the entry, but it hasn't been synchronized yet. The version is not available. And also the last change ad is not available. So I'm going to go on online and I want to see that there's a GraphQL that has been uh, triggered and that will be the mutation. So yeah, the mutation has been sent. So all of the other clients can uh, synchronize and show that message for me. And I can also see that that has happened on the back end. So now I have version and also the timestamp. One thing I want to do is to improve the user experience is I want to show when the application is offline. So I'm going to use an offline property and I'm going to change the UI a little bit. So I'm going to add some classes. I'm going to add a message.
And in order to do that, I'm going to use the HAP from AWS Amplify. That will create a listener, and I'm going to be listening to changes on the network. So let's add that. I'm going to listen to changes on the data store channel, and the message that I want to be listening is the network status. So I'm going to take the event and the data, and that's going to tell me if the network is active. And I'm going to update my offline flagged to change my UI. The only thing I need to do now is change some of the classes so I can change the color of the background and also show a message. This, by doing this, I will be able to tell the user, okay, now you want to send a message to the chat room, but you are offline. So it's clear for the user when the application is operating offline. So I'm going to change that network here so you can see that now the application can tell the user when it's offline and also inform that it's going to be sharing these messages once we get online again. So the only thing that it's left is how we can install this. Um, that's thanks to the manifest. So this is the result in a Mac environment. I can also turn the Wi-Fi off and see how the UI changes. And the same when we go back online. So now we have shown all of the features, we can see that our progressive web app has almost uh, na native like features. We can use it as a full app, it's not on the browser anymore. This is available for different platforms. You can also uninstall it. So we have covered everything. If you want to follow a tutorial, you can go to GSANS Amplify Data Store Chatty View and you can create this same app. You can also follow the final solution. If you get stuck or you want to check the code, this is GSANS Amplify Data Store Chatty PWA View. And that's uh, the end. So in this tutorial, we have seen how to create an offline first app using AWS Amplify and Amplify Data Store. You have created a progressive web app using Vue with a seamless offline experience. You can reload your app while offline. You can store messages while offline and share them when you go back online. You can also show the user whenever the app is offline while providing a great user experience using Amplify Data Store to synchronize your messages. So that's all. Thank you for listening.